With the Nintendo Switch event right around the corner, now would be the perfect time to go over what Nintendo shouldn't do with the Switch. Guys, it's Ryan, also known as the Elusive Squirrel. And I'm Revolution. And this is our top 5 list of what Nintendo shouldn't do with the Switch. The Switch could go horribly wrong if Nintendo markets the device in the wrong way. Consumers must know that it's both a home console and a portable device. Sold on the idea that it's the best of both worlds for Nintendo's home consoles and their portable devices. So far, it seems Nintendo has done a great job with spreading word about the Switch. The reveal trailer didn't feature kids, just strictly young adults. There's also the strategy of the Switch events they are having leading up to launch. Nintendo has gotten a bad reputation over the years because of some of their marketing strategies, but it seems they couldn't make the Switch a success if they continue this strategy after launch. Keep third party support. We want and expect third party support with this new console. With the hardware of the Switch being less powerful than the rival consoles, we might see third party support drop off simply because they won't want to dumb down games to meet the system specs. If this does happen, it will be a Wii U situation where we'll only get games every now and then throughout the year. Third party support is important not only to keep consumers interested in the system, but also to prevent game droughts. Nintendo can't afford to fail with using their IPs properly. Not just with their more prominent IPs, but also for ones that aren't given much attention such as Metroid and for ones that haven't gotten a proper new game in years like F-Zero or Golden Sun. The Switch is the best way Nintendo can introduce their lesser known IPs to a much larger audience. No creativity in games. We do not want EZ to push out titles. Use the Switch to break the mold for games like they are with the new Zelda. The more in-depth games, the better, Nintendo. While a game like, say, Metroid Prime Federation Force had a good idea behind it looking at what the Galactic Federation does without Samus, it was poorly executed. It simply felt like a cash grab on the Metroid name, even though it wasn't exactly the worst game I've ever played. However, it was the worst game in the Metroid series. The battery life must not be below 3 hours. In my experience, my Wii U gamepad lasts between 1.5 to 3 hours. 3 hours was really pushing it if I lowered most of the settings. This is a crucial aspect to surpass the gamepad's battery life for those who may prefer the portable aspect of the system. It won't have the same amount of battery life as, say, an iPad, but Nintendo can't make the mistake of matching the battery life to a laptop since those don't always last long. As always, we thank you guys for checking out our videos and being so interactive. If you like this video, make sure you are subscribed for more content, and make sure to head over to Revolution's channel for our top 5 things Nintendo should do with the Switch. This is the Elusive Squirrel, and I'm Revolution, and we will catch you guys on our next video.